And he said, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. It was nearing the end of Paul's second letter to Timothy, and probably more importantly, nearing the end of his own life, that most believe that this second letter to Timothy was the last epistle that was written by Paul, his final words that needed to be said and needed to be heard. And so it would be with that thought in mind as to how important what was being said needed to be heard and, and ultimately acted on. That could have been why he said this, that twice in the last chapter, Paul told Timothy to hurry to him. Look at this. In verse 9, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. In verse 21 of that fourth chapter, do thy diligence to come before winter. Age and experience, no doubt, had given Paul the perspective that the seasons needed to be acted on, worked within, responded to in a right and responsible way. Be diligent, he said, be diligent to come before winter. He knew the perils that could be, the delays, the, uh, the diversions and distractions of the unexpected. He, he wanted Timothy to be diligent about responding in the appropriate season. Look at this, if you would. Seasons are not meant to respond to us. We are meant to respond to seasons. Let me repeat something that was said in a sermon that I preached for our online services some weeks ago. Somewhere at some point, someone finally figured out that the sun did not revolve around the earth, but rather the earth revolves around the sun. At some point, you and I must surrender to the truth that our life must revolve around God, not the other way around as often we think it does. That's why so many people become frustrated and and disillusioned with their life, unhappy, unfulfilled, seeking uh, and searching constantly. They're trying to get God to fit into all the pieces of their life instead of first surrendering all the pieces to God of their life. Look at this. Satisfying and sustaining fruit can only be found through the acceptance and endurance and right response to the seasons in our life. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, Psalms 1-3 says, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, now look at this for a moment, walk with me. Planted, it, it was the first and the foremost thing, and, and it always is. Without being planted, no root can grow, and, and thereby fruit does not have the chance to ultimately be produced. If there is no root, then there will be no fruit ultimately. Good fruit is the result of being planted in place, growing, in other words, through season after season after season, enduring the elements and and the challenging environments of life that surround us and that are presented to us. And God will use, God uses nature as a means to speak and communicate and illustrate his, his purpose and power, presence to us, if you'll look at this and understand this. He said our life should be like a tree planted by waters by uh, by a river by those waters that we would be sustained by trees or things here now walk with me things that uproot in stormy seasons are never defined as productive but rather they are defined as being destroyed they get cut up things that uproot during stormy seasons they get cut up they get burned they cease to grow a scar Uh, is left in its place. It changes our ability to produce fruit and the intention of what it was first planted for um, is lost. 
Let, let me jump over real quick, if, if you would, please, to Isaiah, and then we'll come back to where we are here in Psalms. Look at this in Isaiah, the, the 61st chapter, third verse. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Look at that last part, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Hear me, someone that's listening to this in a season of life that's been presented to you and that you're finding yourself in right now. Don't uproot in a stormy season of life from what and where God has planted you. You are a tree, not a bramble bush. Because most often when we uproot, it is about our glory and it is about our want and our way and not his. We are planted that he might be glorified, planted of the Lord, not self or the one of this world or the accommodation of our flesh, but we are planted of the Lord that ultimately he would be glorified through it. And that's difficult for our flesh to surrender to and understand sometimes, but nonetheless, it's desperately needful. Remember what we read last week. Don't be offended by the word and miss out on bearing fruit. Accept it and be saved by it in the season that you are in because you are planted by God for a purpose that is ultimately for his glory. Now let's go back to where we were in, in Psalms 1, uh, in the third verse. And he shall be like a, by, be like a tree uh, uh, planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Planted by waters. It matters. Now, now walk with me. It matters where we are planted. For it can determine our ability to be sustained and ultimately bear fruit in the season that we are intended to bear fruit. Certain things are only revealed and received through seasons. Uh, they can be gained no other way. And, and often the perspective of the immediate does not lend itself to the ultimate that will be in our life in God. Because often we want immediate gratification when there may not be immediate gratification in the season that we are found in. But it's necessary in that season for the ultimate producing a fruit in our life. So it matters where we are planted in that season so there can be the ultimate bearing of fruit. Um, certain things can only be revealed through that process, through the seasons. They're not going to be gained any other way. The most fertile soil, and, and, and this is something that has to be understood, understood in the seasons of our life. Be, the most fertile soil is most always found in the valleys, those, those places where, where the runoff from, from above, if you would, from, uh, that's collected uh, from higher things and from things that surround us and uh, where we need to be and where we have been and where we should be and all the things around us, uh, where the elements press, uh, precious things downward. Um, and that's difficult for our, our flesh to respond to. No one likes to live or to go through a valley. The view from the mountain, it's often greater, but little grows on the highest mountains. But the psalmist said that it is in the valley where our soul is restored. It can be in the valley, the season, in your most misunderstood season, that God can ultimately create the best fruit. Good fruit is born in difficult places of our life. It's, it's there that we learn what matters most and, and what does not matter. So is the kingdom of God, Jesus said. So is the kingdom of God. In Mark 4, 26, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and he should sleep and rise night and day, seasons in other words, and the seed should spring up, grow up, but yet he doesn't know how. That's the difficulty within seasons. Um, we don't have full view of when they will begin and when they will end. When it comes to the spirit, the things of God, the things of, of life that really matter, we don't have a calendar or a clock that we can keep that kind of time with. We fret, we worry, and, and we think uh, that this will be the answer or, or that this will finally make me happy. Uh, we rise night and day, if you would, as the word says, and, and, and we don't see how he's working it. We don't see how God is growing it. 
if I can just do this, or if I can go there, if I can get this, if I can buy that, if I can be that, then finally, we think in our mind, our flesh tells us, the world tells us, that message is sent that if, if that, all that can happen, then finally we'll be settled and, and we'll be satisfied and we'll finally be happy. But the truth is, Jesus was saying his will, his kingdom is found in planting and submitting to the seasons that ultimately bring the harvest. Uh, as difficult or as long as they may be, as frustrated as we sometimes may feel, they are necessary. Understand this, please, somebody that is in a moment of life, and that's often what it is. It may seem uh, difficult and, and long at the time, but it is a moment. Uh, they are necessary for what God ultimately wants to produce on us and save us and others by, because it is not just about ourselves or our own gratification. It is about the fruit that is being produced in us and for others as well that will sustain us and them. You and I must find peace in our seasons, whatever that season might be, however it may feel or whatever it might look like, because if we are in them, we are in them because God has a purpose for them. If you are finding yourself in a difficult season, God has a purpose in that season. It could be for you, it could be for another. If you're finding yourself in a season that seems to bear fruit, thank God for it. If it's a dormant season, understand, it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. It's part of the process of the purpose of God. Look at this, if you would, please. Peace is an accepted process in the purpose of God. We often look at peace as a destination point that we want to get to. Uh, but sometimes we have to understand that the peace of God that passes understanding and, and the promise that he, would, that he told us that he would keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on him, peace is, is not necessarily a, a destination point. It is not something that we arrive at, but peace is an accepted process in the purpose of God, in the plan of God for our life. Look at this in Philippians. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Our, our want, in other words, uh, must not outweigh the state or the season that we are in. Do you understand that? Uh, our want must not outweigh the state or the season that God is trying to get us to learn in. Because contentment, happiness, peace, if you would, is a learned response often, not something that we are born with. We come into the trust and the surrender and submission of the season that God has us in, and we find peace in that process because we are in the hands of a sovereign God that sees the end from the beginning, not just the temporal moment that we are moved by. Jesus said in the 29th verse of Mark 4 that when the fruit is brought forth, the sickle is put in because it's time for the harvest. Meaning, in other words, simply stated that we are meant ultimately to bear fruit. God has a plan for us that we are to grow into so that there is the bringing forth of fruit in our life. Meaning there's an ex expectation. And this is something that, that needs to be accepted and needs to be responded to. Uh, there's an expectation from God for us. There's demand that we respond right to be and to do what we are supposed to to do and to be because the fruit that only we can grow is expected from us. It's not about the fruit of another. It's not about uh, what we have in, in our mind as expectation of other people's lives, but it's the fruit that is supposed to be born from us that only we can bear in our life after we have gone through the seasons that bring us to that moment of harvest. Let me end with this. In the book of Micah, the fifth chapter in the seventh verse. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. God said the dew from the Lord. This is, this is so unique. God said the dew from the Lord, the, the showers upon the grass tarrieth for no man. They do not wait for the sons of men, he said. We surrender to the seasons. They don't surrender to us. We fit into God's plan. We, we respond now, not later. The rain, wait, he was saying here, the rain waits for no man. Um, we must respond to his time, not our time. Our time must submit to the eternal of God. Uh, who we are, our life, and everything around us and about us, we fit into the plan of God. 
The rain waits for no man. The dew, he, he intends for it to be, but it does not tarry just for us to catch up, if you would. We are to be in time and in tune with the will and the purpose of God. And I think if you look around in the season that we are in in our world right now and all the, all the things that are surrounding us, it should be that you have your finger on the pulse of the Spirit to know that now is the time to respond. Not a day to delay, not another season to wait on, not another, another moment that should be. No, because the rain waits for no man. This is the day of salvation. This is the season to surrender to God. The, the time to submit to what he wants and, and what he is doing in our life. Whether you're young or whether you're old or whatever your season of life may seem to be or the station of life that you think you are in. Can I tell you now is the time to be saved. Now is the time to respond to God. Now is the time to do the work that God has put before you and intended for you and you alone. Plant, sow the seed, let the roots grow deep. Because when the roots grow deep, they will sustain you in difficult days and what seems to be dry seasons, dormant times. And ultimately, those roots that grow deep, planted by the water and the sustaining source of the Spirit, they will produce fruit in your season that will save you and that will save others. And I believe today for someone to hear this word, that God is using this season, your season, to save you now. Pray with me, wherever you are, take time right now to trust in God. Father, I pray for those that are watching, listening to this, that God, that you would help them to recognize and to know that you are calling them in this season. That you are dealing with them, Lord, and that you are wooing them in the spirit for them to ultimately be saved and, and, and to bear fruit. And help the one God that's discouraged and feels dormant and dry right now to understand that, that you have not abandoned them, though it may feel as if the, the world surrounding them and there, there's a little hope can, can somehow, God, I, I pray that they would recognize and hear today that you are for them and not against them and that they would know, Lord, that the season they are in is ultimately for the purpose of the Spirit for them to bear fruit and that they would be saved by it. And Lord, for the one that's listening right now that is distant, that has drawn away from you, I pray that they would come back and recognize the hope is not in this world or the things of it, but our hope is in you. And that we as a people would learn to be content in the state that we are in. Because if we are in this place, God, if we are in this season, then you have a purpose in it that you are working it for our good. And so Lord, right now I pray, I pray that some soul would be touched, some mind would be moved in the spirit and they would recognize by the power of the Holy Ghost that they need to repent and be baptized in your name and filled with your spirit, that salvation is for them. And God, that you are drawing them now, that ultimately they would bear fruit for themselves and for others around them, the ones that they love and care for, because you care for us all, Lord. And we trust in you. Though times we don't understand, God, still yet we trust in you. So, Lord, right now I pray in your name, Father, be glorified through us because we are planted by you, trees of righteousness, for your glory, for your honor. In Jesus' name. God bless you.